Hello everyone, this is Preeti here and our today's topic is Management Theories and Approaches. Under this, we are going to see Bureaucratic Management Theory by Max Weber. Coming to the presentation outline, where under classical school, already in the previous videos, we have seen the Scientific Management Theory by F. W. Taylor and Administrative Management Theory by Henry Friol. Here, we are going to see the introduction to Bureaucratic Management Theory by Max Weber, his two important elements, his six principles or the characteristics of bureaucratic management theory, some of the examples in public and private sectors, the organizational structure of Indian Army, and some of the limitations of Weber's theory. An interesting fact is quiz time, that is famous brands and companies logo are discussed. Coming to the classical school introduction to bureaucratic management theory. Max Weber, who was born in 1864 in Persia, Germany, was a sociologist and political economist best known for his thesis of the Protestant ethic relating to Protestantism to capitalism and for his ideas on bureaucracy. So what the term bureaucracy means? It refers to an organizational structure which has certain rules, standardized process, procedures and requirements, meticulous division of labor and responsibility, clear hierarchy of authority and professional and almost impersonal interactions between the employees. That is, there is no personal relationship between the employees and the organization. So the bureaucratic management approach gives importance to the necessity of organizations to operate in a rational way that is no bias instead of following the arbitrary whims or the irrational emotions and intentions of owners and managers. As Max Weber was the first person to talk about bureaucracy, he is said to be the father of bureaucratic management theory, whereas the father of scientific management theory is F. W. Taylor and father of general management theory is Henry Fayol. Weber's theory to bureaucratic management has two essential elements. They are an organizational hierarchy, which is nothing but the hierarchy of authority, where the arrangement of the organization by means of authority. Example, first comes the company's president, then below the president, there is a vice president, below the vice president, there is a supervisor, and after the supervisor comes the workers. So this is the hierarchy where it comes from top level to the bottom level. Coming to the rational legal decision-making rules which is nothing but the set of explicit rules, policies and the procedures that governs the organizational functions like planning, organizing, staffing, leading and controlling. So some of the examples here are officials elected by authors, rules that are in the constitution or the policies that are written in the formal document or some of the examples of rational legal decision making rules. So these were the two essential elements described by Weber in his theory of bureaucratic management. Coming to the principles of Weber's bureaucratic theory. First is the division of labor based on the specialization and skills. Second is the authority hierarchy based on the levels of authority from top level management to lower level management. Third is the formal selection which is the formal selection of employees. Fourth one, formal rules and regulations that everyone in the organization should follow. Fifth one is impersonality which means there is no personal relationship between the employees. Sixth one is career orientation where the employees were given opportunity to build up their own careers. Coming to the explanation for all the principles or characteristics of Weber's theory. First is the division of labor, where the jobs are divided into simple, routine and fixed category based on competence and functional specialization. Second comes the authority hierarchy, where the officers are organized in hierarchy or in levels in which the higher officer controls the lower position holders. That is, the president controls the vice president, vice president controls the supervisor, supervisor controls the workers. Third is a formal selection where all the organization members are selected based on technical qualifications and competence by either training or education or formal examination. So each and every organization will have their own formal selection process. Fourth comes the formal rules and regulations. To ensure the uniformity and to regulate the action of the employees, the manager depends on rules and regulations that everyone should follow inside the organization. Fifth one is impersonality, where the rules and controls are common, avoiding the involvement with personalities and preference of employees. That is, there is no biasness and favoritism. Sixth one is career orientation, where the career building opportunities is offered to the employees and the promotions of salary based on technical competence. So these were the six principles or characteristics of Weber's theory. Coming to the examples of Weber's theory. Weber's bureaucratic theory works well with government organizations and large business firms. Since there are many number of people or the employees working in their organization, if they have a proper hierarchy or the formal rules or regulations of formal selection, it will be easier to control them. That's why Weber's bureaucratic theory is most helpful 
or suitable for government organizations and large business firms. The good examples in public sector are social security administration, environmental protection, public universities, etc. In private sectors, Weber's bureaucratic theory is applicable to IBM, which is nothing but the International Business Machine Corporation, GM, which is nothing but the General Motors Company, and Union Pacific Railroad. So these were some of the examples in public and private sectors. One more example of Weber's bureaucratic theory is the organizational structure for Indian Army. So first comes the Army headquarters, then comes the commands, Eastern Command, Western Command, Northern Command, etc. Then comes the corps, then comes the divisions, I think it has 37 divisions, then comes the brigades, then battalion, then company, then planton, and next last is nothing but a section. This is the organizational structure of our Indian Army. So this is one of the best examples where it follows the organizational hierarchy and rational legal decision making rules. Coming to some of the limitations of Weber's theory. Too much emphasis on formal rules and regulation ignores the social needs and the human elements. Second one is the hierarchy of authority denies the benefits of open communication. Since all the messages or the information has to pass through the hierarchy, there is no open communication. Third one is the bureaucratic organizations do not allow the flexibility that is due to the rigid rules and regulations as it hampers the human creativity and innovation of new ideas, new products, new decisions due to the impersonal or there is no personal touch between the employees and strict rules. Fourth one is the system suffers from too much of paperwork and red tape. Due to the too much of paperwork, the employees waste their time, money and efforts. Fifth one, if the employees are used to this system, that is bureaucratic theory, then they resist the change and introduction of new techniques of operations in the organizations. So these were some of the limitations of Weber's theory. Under classical school, we have seen three theories, namely scientific management theory, administrative management theory, and bureaucratic management theory. So let's see what's the difference between all these theories which comes under the classical school. First, based on the author, so scientific management theory's author is F.W. Taylor, who is the father of scientific management. Administrative management theory's author is Henry Fayol, who is the father of general management. And bureaucratic management theory's author is Max Weber, who is the father of bureaucratic management. Coming to the importance given to each theories, scientific management theory emphasizes on production and engineering, that is on the manufacturing side, and mostly concentrate on the workers or the supervisors. Whereas the administrative management theory gives importance to managerial functions, namely planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling, which includes the top level management. Third one is a bureaucratic management theory, where it gives importance to the organizational structure or the organizational hierarchy and rational legal decision making rules, where it concentrates on the top level management. Some of the applications of each theory are scientific management theory is applicable to specialized organizations that is on the manufacturing side and recently there is evolution of digital Taylorism. Administrative management theory is applicable universally to most of the organizations. Third comes the bureaucratic management theory where it is mostly applicable to government sectors or large organization firms. So these were the main differences between the three classical theories scientific management theory, administrative management theory and bureaucratic management theory. Coming to the interesting thing for today, which is a quiz time, logo of famous brands and companies. Keep guessing each and every logo and let's see what it is. So are you all ready to discuss? Okay, let's start. First is Britannia. Did you guess it right? Okay. Second is Jaguar. Third is the watch company, Titan. Fourth is the financial sector, SBI, State Bank of India. Fifth one is Air India. Sixth, I think you will be right, Tata. Seventh one is Atel. Keep guessing the eighth one. I'll go to ninth one. Everready Battery. Tenth one is a car company, Fiat and CNBC channel and this eighth one is Alibaba group which is a competitor to Amazon and last is Digital India. So here are some of the logos, let's see what it is. Keep guessing. Okay, shall we start? Right. First is Cafe Coffee Day, second is 
Royal Enfield. I think you'll be familiar with this. Third one, it's easy. Microsoft. Fourth one is ITZ. It is Calcutta based company. Fifth one. Yeah, it's Ola Cap. Fiber Castle. Good. Next comes Adidas. And last is Android. I think you like this video. For more videos, keep subscribing to this channel, UGC Net MBA Aspirants. And see you in the next video. Thank you.